Good afternoon. My name is Evgeny Katelnikov, and I would like to tell you about modern neural language models. <coughs> we have the following plan. Uh, first, I will tell you what are language models and what are encoder and decoder. We will consider the main architecture of model, modern uh, language models, transformer, and analyze the attention mechanism underlying it. Transfer learning is a common way to apply pre-trained language models to solve new problems. Next, we will look at some of the most prominent applications that use language models, in particular sentiment analysis, dialogue systems, including ChatGPT, sociology, image generation from textual descriptions, and protein structure prediction. Then we'll take a look at the current state of the language models and see how large and open they are. Next, we will draw some conclusions. Let's start. So, what are the language models? We all have experience of interacting with language models. When you start typing a search term in Google or Bing, the system offers hints. For example, to the text uh, who created, Bing responds with such variants to continue, Fanta, Minecraft, and YouTube. And Google responds to the same query with the same Fanta, but also Google and uh, UNESCO. The same can be seen in messengers. For example, Telegram suggests a continuation, a sentence that begins with avatar, with the words is and the and so on. This is one of the main tasks of language models, to choose the most likely continuation of some text. The text, which is the input of the model, is called prompt. Let's take a look at what language models have under the hood. We will start with two main components, which are called encoder and decoder. A decoder is a language model, or part of it, that takes a prompt as input and generates its continuation. The figure shows an example where the phrase the devil is in them is used as the prompt and the model must choose which next word is most likely. In the example, the word details has the highest probability. Decoder is the base for one of the most popular language models called GPT generative pre-trained transformer, developed by OpenAI. Later, we will meet with this model more than once in our lecture. Encoder is a language model or part of it that allows you to build vector representations of text. We represent text as vectors in a multidimensional space. A peculiarity of these vectors is that the distance between them corresponds to the semantic similarity. The closer the vectors, the more similar in meaning they are. The closeness of vectors is usually measured uh, by the angle between them. The figure shows uh, an example when the model builds vectors for three different sentences containing the word date in different meanings. He invited me on a date to a restaurant, May the 4th is an important date for Star Wars fans. The project must be completed by this date. The angle between sentence vectors, where date is the day, is smaller than for the sentence vector, where date is a romantic appointment. The most famous model based on the encoder is called BERT, Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers, developed by Google. An architecture consisting of several interacting encoder and decoder layers is called a transformer. The appearance of this architecture in 2017 started the rapid development of language models, which still continues. This figure from the original paper shows an example of how a transformer works on a translation task. The input of the model, or rather encoder, receives a sentence in French Je suis étudiant. Encoder generates a vector representation of this sentence. The information passes through several layers of the encoder. The resulting vector 
is fed to the inputs of all layers of the decoder, which converts the vector into a sentence in English. It should be noted that the decoder outputs one word per step. At each step, the input of the decoder, as a prompt, is all the previously generated text. If we look inside only one encoder or decoder layer, we will see a rather complex structure there. We will not analyze it in detail now, but it is important to understand that modern language models are neural networks with dozens and even hundreds of layers. Such networks are called deep, and the discipline that studies them is called deep learning. Mathematically, neural networks are described by sets of numerical matrices. The values in these matrices are called network parameters. The number of parameters of language models, as we will see below, can be hundreds of millions, billions, and even hundreds of billions. These are very large and heavy models. The paper that proposed the transformer architecture is called Attention is all you need. Attention is the main mechanism underlying modern language models. Let's see what attention is. Attention is an approach in which, for each input word, the degree of its significance for all other words is determined. This slide uh, shows an example of how the model processes the input sentence. Masha didn't go to school because she is already a student. A problem may arise here. Which word does she refers to? Masha or school? The model solves this problem by assigning a greater degree of significance, attention, to the word Masha than to the word school. The attention mechanism is implemented in both encoder and decoder, as shown in the figure on the right. The next important technique in language models is called transfer learning. It is a way of applying pre-trained language models to solve new problems. The method includes two stages, pre-training and fine-tuning. At the first stage, the language model is trained using large training dataset. As a rule, this dataset is simply collected from the Internet and not labeled. The model is trained to predict the next word or fill in specially made gaps in sentences. It is believed that the resulting pre-trained language model knows the patterns of the language in which the training texts were written, for example, English or Russian. It should be noted that there are also multilingual models. At the fine-tuning stage, the pre-trained model is tuned to solve a specific problem, for example, sentiment analysis or text classification by topic. For this, a small training dataset is used, the text of which are labeled by people for the task under consideration. The resulting fine-tuned model can be used to solve the problem of interest. Thus, Using the transfer learning approach, it is possible to separate the long and complex pre-training stage from a relatively simple fine-tuning stage. A model obtained during pre-training and knowing the language can be reused for different tasks using fine-tuning. Next, let's look at some of the most interesting applications of newer language models. The first task we will look at is called sentiment analysis. Sentiment is an emotional attitude towards some object expressed in the text in accordance with a given scale. The scale can be binary, positive and negative, ternary, neutral or contradictory values are added, or multi-valued, for example, from 1 to 5 stars. The slide shows an example of a review for which we can perform a sentiment analysis. The review mentions objects such as Desktop, iPhone, Samsung, aspects of objects, NFC sound, battery charge, 
positive and negative words and expressions are used. For example, happy, good quality, unclear, doesn't hold, and so on. The language model for which we performed fine tuning can evaluate the sentiment of this review both in general and in relation to specific objects. Let's look at a specific example of sentiment analysis. In the paper of the Nature Journal in 2022, a study was published on how the COVID-19 pandemic affected the emotional state of the population of different countries. The researchers collected over 600 million posts uh, from Twitter and Weibo from the 1st of January to the 31st of May 2020 from over 100 countries. This was the first wave of COVID. They performed sentiment analysis using the fine-tuned multilingual BERT model. The slide shows the degree of change on mood across countries in May compared to January. The more red the country is shaded, the greater the drop in mood was fixed in it. The figure shows that the pandemic has had the greatest negative impact in Spain, Australia, the United Kingdom and Colombia, and the least in Botswana, Tunisia, Oman, Bahrain and Greece. The next example of the use of language models is dialogue systems and chatbots. The most famous chatbot is ChatGPT from OpenAI, which appeared on November 30, 2022. This model is based, as the name implies, on the GPT decoder model. Immediately after its introduction, ChatGPT had a resounding effect in the media space. Indeed, the possibilities and the examples of dialogues with ChatGPT are impressive. The model can remember what user said earlier in the conversation, allow user to provide follow-up corrections, decline inappropriate requests. But ChatGPT also has limitations. It may generate incorrect information, so don't rely too much on its answers. Produce harmful instructions or biased content and knows nothing about events after 2021. Let's look at some examples of how ChatGPT works. The user asks, what is the Fermat's little theorem? ChatGPT answers. When the user keeps asking, how is it used in cryptography? ChatGPT is able to understand the reference, it, to the subject of the previous question, Fermat's little theorem. In this example, ChatGPT demonstrates the ability to reformulate its response. The user asks to write a short note to introduce myself to my neighbor. The model offers a variant of such a note. When the user refines the query, ChatGPT rewrites its response in a more formal style. Here, the user is asking to tell him about when Christopher Columbus came to the US in 2015. ChatGPT shows that he understand, understands that this is impossible because Christopher Columbus died in uh, 1506, but tries to imagine what would have happened if he had actually arrived. The previous examples were provided by the developers of ChatGPT. On these and the next slides are my own requests. I asked ChatGPT, in what areas can Indian and Russian university cooperate? ChatGPT replied, Indian and Russian universities can cooperate in a variety of academic and research fields, including, but not limited to, and the listed 11 areas. Next, I decided to specify my question. Please clarify which areas are the most promising. ChatGPT offered the five most promising options from its points of view, including mentioning artificial intelligence. 
models like ChatGPT retrieve information for a response only from their memory, more precisely from their parameters. There are other models, such as Gödel, Seeker, Blenderbot, and others, that can access external databases or the Internet. These models are based on the transformer or its components, just like in ChatGPT. Models are able to take into account the history of the dialogue, and when generating a response, they turn to external knowledge. Let's look at an example on the slide. Here is an example of processing a request by the Seeker chatbot. Suppose a user wants to know what Beyoncé is planning for 2022. Uh, this paper was published in March 2022. The chatbot accesses the internet with a request Beyoncé 2022 and finds a lot of documents. Of this, uh, the chatbot selects the most relevant one, marked uh, knowledge on the diagram. According to Sony Music's CEO, the star will be releasing her album in the first quarter of 2022. And the response is generated. In 2022, Beyoncé has plans to release a new album early in the year. Let's now look at the next interesting example of the application of language models, this time in sociology. The researchers suggested uh, that models like GPT could be used as surrogates for human respondents in a variety of social science tasks. That is, by correctly setting the prompt, it is possible to a certain extent to replace the conduct of a sociological survey with the work of the model. This is possible because uh, when training models, real texts are used that contain the ideas and attitudes of large groups of people. To confirm this hypothesis, the researchers conducted the following experiment. They asked the model to describe supporters of the Democratic and Republican parties in terms of supporters of both parties. To do this, they submitted a description of a supporter of one of the parties as a prompt to the GPT-3 input and asked to generate four words describing a supporter of a particular party. The table on the slide shows examples of such requests. The rows correspond to party supporters. The top row is for Republicans, the bottom row is for the Democrats. The columns correspond to the parties whose supporters you want to describe. The left column describes the Democrats, the right column describes the Republicans. The text that was input to the model is shown in black. Four words generated by the model are highlighted in blue. For example, in the upper left corner, the prompt for the model represents a convinced Republican. Ideologically, I describe myself as a conservative. Politically, I am a strong Republican. Rationally, I am white. I am male. Financially, I am upper class. In terms of my age, I am young. The model is asked to describe in four words a Democrat. When I am asked to write down four words that typically describe people who support the Democratic Party, I respond with. As a result, the model generates the words liberal, socialist, communist, and atheist. The bottom diagram shows the correspondence between the answers of the GPT-3 model and the answers of real respondents. You can see words that Democrats on the left side and Republicans on the right side are used to describe Democrats. The size of the circles corresponds to the frequency of the words. It can be seen from the figure that there is a significant correlation between the responses of people and the model. The researchers 
also asked about 3,000 uh, people to evaluate the respondents and the models word lists by answering the question, is the list uh, written by a person? As a result, the word lists of the respondents and the models were rated almost equally, with approximately 61% uh, of the lists attributed to people. This suggests that the model imitates the opinion of real party supporters. In the second experiment, the authors simulated the NS study, American National Election Studies, uh, on predicting the results of the US presidential elections in 2012, 2016, and 2020. To do this, the GPT-3 model was given a prompt describing the characterization of a particular person from the NS study as input, and estimated the probability of two sentences. <clears throat> In 2012, for example, I voted for Mitt Romney. And in 2012, I voted for Barack Obama. From the diagram, you can see that um, the results of the GPT-3 predictions uh, turned out to be very close to the results of the original NS study. Based on the results of the research, the authors made the following conclusions. People describe Republicans and Democrats with different terms that highlight distinct stereotypes of both groups. The affective content and the extremity of these texts is tied to individuals' political beliefs and identity. Stereotypes of supporters contain issue, group, and trade-based content. And uh, other people can guess the partisanship of individuals based on their stereotypes of Democrats and Republicans. It is important to note that all of this is evident using only the data from GPT-3. The next type of models we will look at belongs to the text-to-image class. They generate images based on a text description. In 2022, there was a significant leap in the generation quality of such models. The best-known models are DALI-2 from OpenAI, Imagine from Google, and Open Source Stable Diffusion from Stability AI. These models belong to the diffusion class. They are first trained to reconstruct images from the training set overlaid with random noise. Then, the trained model uh, can be given arbitrary noise as input, and it will generate a new image based on it. To include a textual description of the picture in this scheme, we must obtain a vector representation of the description using a neural language model uh, based on the transformer architecture, for example, BERT or GPT, and then train the diffusion model to reconstruct the distorted training image, along with the resulting representation of the text description. The slide shows examples of images generated by different models. The last kind of model we will look at today predicts the three-dimensional protein structure based on its amino acid sequence. In 2020, DeepMind's AlphaFold 2 model won the CASP-14 competition. It is a critical assessment of protein structure prediction competition, reaching an average accuracy of almost 90%. In biology and medicine, it is extremely important to be able to predict the three-dimensional structure of a protein based on the amino acid sequence that defines it. An example of such a structure for a coronavirus spike is shown on the slide. The structure of a protein determines its properties and ability to interact with other molecules. Traditionally, an experimental approach is used to determine the structure of a protein, for example, based on X-ray diffraction analysis, nuclear magnetic resonance, or cryo-electron microscopy. However, such experiments are complex, expensive, and time-consuming. That is why AlphaFold2's success in solving this problem is so important. 
It would seem that the task of predicting the three-dimensional structure of a protein is far from the field of natural language processing. However, the AlphaFold 2 model is based on a variant of the transformer architecture called the Evoformer and also uses the attention mechanism. AlphaFold 2 learns to predict protein structures based on the formation of effective representations of amino acid sequences. This model takes into account the connections, that is, attention, between their elements and the structures of similar proteins. DeepMind uh, has made the AlphaFold 2 model publicly available so that uh, researchers around the world can use it in their work. Let's now look at the current situation with language models uh, in terms, in terms uh, of their size and availability. Over the past five years, language models have grown exponentially. This can be illustrated with a graph on the slide. Note that the ordinate scale is logarithmic, so linear growth around this scale is actually exponential. On the graph, we can see the BERT and GPT models already known to us. One of the largest models in the world is the Megatron Turing, which has over half of trillion parameters. This slide shows the relative size of several dozen models. Here you can compare the size of the BERT, GPT-3 and the Megatron Turing with other models. This timeline highlights the appearance of several key language models seen since uh, 2020. Green color indicates open sourced models. It can be, see, it can be seen uh, that in 2022 the situation with the availability of models has improved significantly. Several open sourced uh, models have appeared, such as GPT Neo X, Opt, Bloom, Yalm and GLM. However, as we have, see, as we have seen, uh, many of today's language models are so large that they cannot be run in most usual university laboratories, not to mention the computers of individual researchers. Uh, one of the largest and the most famous resources on which open sourced uh, models are released is the Hugging Face website. At the beginning of February 2023, the resource contains about 130,000 models. Directly on the site, the model of interest can be launched using a simple interface. This slide shows an example of the operation of the GPT-J model with 6 billion parameters from Illuser AI. The black color shows the prompt and the blue color shows the result of the model generation. Well, it's time to draw some conclusions. I hope I was able to show that neural language models are currently successfully solving problems that were inaccessible to artificial intelligence systems a decade ago, and their capabilities are constantly growing. Quite a few open sourced models appeared last year, but the resources of individual researchers and laboratories have become critically insufficient to work with such models. The answer to this uh, was a significant increase in the share of scientific collaborations. The graph shows the number of results for large-scale artificial intelligence systems over the past 11 years. It can be seen that in 2022 the share of results obtained by decentralized research collectives, indicated in grey, uh, exceeded the share of results <clears throat> obtained in individual universities, indicated in blue. Therefore, in order to work successfully in this area, it is necessary to develop research collaborations, including 
interdisciplinary ones. So, our lecture has come to the end. I hope it was interesting and helpful. I would like to thank uh, Vyadka State University and Vladimir Patanin Foundation for their support in preparing this lecture. Thanks for your attention.